Go on, another mystery. Dear Gael O'Carrash, um, mine here. Now, this is um, the thing about archaeology is full of mysteries, it's great. And the, the fact that it's hard to resolve most of them is even greater sometimes. Mine here, now then, this is far more obscure, um, to be honest with you. And the mine here is, uh, you know, we can debate for many hours what, what the mine here is. Mine here is, it's a long stone, mine here, stone, long, long stone. There is a particular long stone cast to the side of the uh, the road between uh, right between Pont, Pont Arelan and Crumostwith up on the top there. Um, and this is the stone. It's quite famous, really, because there's a lot of stories. It was recorded in, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? The shepherd who wrote the book, All Men Good and True, uh, whatever it was called. Oh, do his name escapes, but he's completely. Yeah, er- Erwin Howell. Excuse me. Erwin Howell. Erwin Howell. It's in his book, and he records a, a, a tradition that this stone used to stand the other side of the road, but was taken down and thrown to where it was, and it's a Bronze Age standing stone. So there's a, there's a now there's no evidence that that's true. Uh, it's it, there's a tradition that it was done, but there's no evidence that it's the case. Stones are cracker, you know. If, I mean, just up there, that line there is the road. That's the Cumberland Road. You can't see it in this photograph. Uh, if there was ever a stone that should be a standing stone, that's the one. You know, it, it it's the right shape, length, size. It looks like it's been chosen to be a standing stone. Uh, and there are various con- contradictory stories about how it got where it is today. But certainly one of the best stories we, we've shared, and, and, and re- most recent, is just at the top of the foot, there's a bit of bit of uh, rough ground there. There's actually a hollow up there where you can see the shape of the stone, where it was laying before it was moved to this point. And at some point in the last 50 odd years, I think, um, workmen and working on the road decided they wanted to use that stone to fill a hole in. And the farmer who happened to be passing the tenant on that bit of the estate stopped them and said, no, you can't use that. That's the standing stone or whatever. And so they threw it down that side of the road. So having dragged it out with the JCB or something, they then had to throw it onto the other side of the road. But even that doesn't help us because wherever it were, the hollow it was, it was laying in the other side of the road, it couldn't, it probably wasn't its original position anyway. It had probably been pushed into there at some point in the past. So the the oddity about it is that you know these are two very early maps of of this area. Now you can see the old road uh, it goes through. Uh, Craigslist is named on the Keredig side. Nothing is named on the on the. the I was going to say the Radnorshire side. That was actually Montgomeryshire at the time. It's Radnorshire now. It's now. It used to be in part Montgomeryshire. That's over around 1820. Then you go up to the 1830s. A little bit more detail. Um, you know, you've got Glan Vedwin is this hill here. And the mine here stone is sort of down, down here, just down below the road here. But this bit of hill is very interesting. All this upland block here is incredibly interesting. And the surveys we've done in the last 10, year, 10 12, 15 years and some of the aerial photography that the Royal Commission have done in the previous five to 10 years brought out a lot of prehistoric archaeology that people didn't know about. And Glan Vedwin is kind of, we'll, we'll see it in the third presentation more about Glan Vedwin actually. Um, but it's got some of the, the finest prehistoric archaeology in mid Wales, I'd say, without any doubt. It's, it's very, very interesting. But this is the 1888 uh, one inch map, and as you can see, the wider area, okay? But pretty much all the hills around there have got, got Bronze Age archaeology. But, you know, we'll kiss to find is the Carnell there here. There's some massive stone cairns on the top here. Um, but I know Grigasiest Gr- 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 here, that, that's covered with small cairns, you know. Uh, over here, you've got Carnell Grice. Um, there, there, we've we've recorded several cairns there. Da da da. It goes on and on and on. There, there's Bronze Age archaeology scattered everywhere, but our site is down is, is down here near the road, and there's nothing nothing of notion on these early maps. But you get to 1889. You just decide just the corner. It's a very awkward joint on the map, just above that road there. You get the name Mine here, okay, and a dot on the map, which is a mystery. We don't know why there's a dot there. We could interpret that as meaning that's where the mine here stood. Okay, we don't know because um, the odd thing is when you go on to the, the 1905 map a few years later, the name mine here is more prominent, but this, the point where the dot was there, it's no longer there. So is that telling us the stone was originally there but was moved? We don't know, um, but it's a theory we're kind of working with. You can see the road is down here. The stone is now sort of down there somewhere, just been dragged down theoretically to um, to the side of the road. So. What we wanted to do was to do some geophysical survey again and get the unit once again and um, 
and started a little project through Elon Links to use the geophysics to see if we could identify the original site of the stone, because it's possible that we could do that, because if it was a standing stone, it would have been set into a hole, and the geophysics, geophysics theoretically could show us where that hole, the disturbance had been, where the hole was, so, and where, or if it had been dug out, that disturbance may show up. But also, standing stones tended to mark things you know, more, more than they seem on the surface, because they tended to be cremation burial sites gathered around them. So theoretically, you could find through the geophysics evidence of further disturbances, okay? Um, so we we were hopeful that the geophysics would help us to identify the original site of the stone. So uh, we went out on a very gloomy day with a few friends. It was an open invitation, but the uh, our two stalwarts, um, Vic Pardo and David James, came up and joined uh, uh, myself and Jenny, Andy and Brooks. Um, there's the stone again. You, again, you can't see the road. Um, you can see better in the shot. That's that's the hollow where the stone had been dragged from when it, where it was laying before it got to where it is now. So we had a, a fun time. It's, it's a fascinating landscape. This and the views are tremendous from this side. And, and if you think, put your thinking of prehistory. If you wanted to um, you, uh, develop a site as a you know as a, as a ritual, as a funeral ritual site that could be appreciated by travellers passing through the landscape, this is a great place. Or from where the that you know the dead could rest and and, and survey the uh, the territory around them. This this is you've got the views down the Astrid are, are fantastic from here, but this is you know you can see um, Ian and Vic are pegging up the uh, first twenty meter grid square. We're on the main road, so people could see us and people did stop and talk. You know the the farm the family who farm here came to have a chat and told us quite a lot about the family traditions, because the, the family really do believe, and they've been there for several generations, they, 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 their belief is that it was a standing stone that was moved. That, that's kind of the origins of the story, really. Uh, and, and, you know, we've no, no reason to doubt them. It's just a question of how do you prove these things, really. Um, uh, worth bearing in mind that from mine here, Carnethai and Glan Bedwin are off to the right of this image. But when you look down from all those sites, look down that valley, in the distance is Copper Hill, which we know was being mined for for bronze for for um, uh, during the Bronze Age, um, you know. So it, we we know there is a Bronze Age population living in in this area. So it, it's not unreasonable to think that this hill had significance to them. And, you know, where they lived, we're not sure, but uh, this may well this I, we suspect this is where their dead were being buried, or one of the places their dead were being buried anyway. So, yes, we had a, a very pleasant day, David and Jenny and so forth. And you can see how close the road is. Again, behind them, Ian is in a hollow. That's the hollow the stone came out of. I'll just make that point. But it's a difficult one. There is so much, um, there's so much reed growth on this site that Ian had great difficulty uh, undertaking the survey. Um, it, it was a large part of it were nigh on impossible. And you can see with his results now. And that really did put a bit of a damper on the exercise to assume. The sun did come out, but yeah, you can see from the images, it's, it's a bit of a struggle. Um, I, I will not dwell on that for the sake of, of time, really. But what we did get out of the end was a lot of fuzz, um, very different to Shest Abakython, you can see. Uh, and in the image on the right, you can see the reddish shaded areas A and B. Uh, there was no, they, they were, the reeds were so thick that, They've disturbed everything. They, you know, the, the resistance, as it were, to the survey there is, is is clumps of reeds and and mess. Really, it's, yes, it's very wet as well. But but there is one little part of which is you can certainly see um, it's an L-shaped square. But certainly in that area, there seems to be a slightly circular feature. And Ian, you know, Ian is good at picking features out of um, these images. It takes. People like ourselves a lot longer to, to get our eyes focused on them, but he's clearly got that there. Sorry, the B actually is where I think in the past vehicles have been driven up onto the common. There's a bit of a, there is actually a little bit of a gully there where where um, a quad bikes possibly or even council workmen looking for big stones uh, have been uh, have disturbed it slightly there. But that is one thing that's come up. So we've certainly got a feature that's worthy of further exploration. It's not far from where the stone was lying. Um, the dot on the map would be somewhere further up this corner here, and it's probably in the area that's disturbed by the reeds. So, so really, this again remains a mystery. What, what is the significant significance of my dear? Is it a bronze age standing stone? Is it a marker for a bronze age cemetery? Um, 
you know, the name itself tells us there's grounds to believe that. You know, you, a hill doesn't get a name like mine here, or the slope of the hill doesn't get the name like mine here for no reason at all. But again, you know, we, we're going to be very pushed to prove much more. We won't, we won't prove any, anything else with the geophysical survey. Some limited excavations across that, you know, look at that circular feature to see if there's anything, if there is anything going on there and try to pin down an area where that dot is on the map and, and maybe take out a, a square there and excavate, you know, take the turf off and see what's underneath it. Can we identify the setting, the socket where a standing stone stood? Those are things we can pursue. But again, you know, unfortunately, the tradition as it stands remains a tradition. And uh, we, 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 I wouldn't say we're none the wiser, but a little bit wiser. But we're still, you know, tantalizingly far away from the truth, I'm afraid. The rushes and the reeds, which prevented a, a sort of like a clear survey mm. could they have been cleared with permission from the the tenant farmer and and a better result got um jenny yes yes if, yes if we if they've been they could have been sized and and sort of raked off and that that would have helped then um with, with the survey um it, it's the, the particular he he couldn't do the resistivity survey here um, the resistivity survey is the one that's got the prongs that you you have to lift the whole thing up and then stick it down into the ground. And that is just impossible with all the reeds there. Um, but that may have been then more possible. It's, the one he's doing there that Paul's showing is the magnetometry survey. So he, he doesn't have to keep putting stuff down the ground. So all he has to do is hold that and walk up and mm. down the lines that are laid out. Um, so certainly clearing the rushes would would help. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't do that in this case. Thank you. I think that we are all sensitive about leaving a small footprint as possible, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, you'd have to be uh, quite, you know, it could, could be done, but that would be a bigger project, you know, and it would, um, yeah, I think, we, I think we were quite happy taking our chances of what we could do at this stage at a fairly low level to see if that brought anything out immediately. But we, we did learn more, certainly. We, we certainly, uh, especially talking to the, to the farmers, um, a lot more detail was put on to where the story came from and the more details about the story. So that was a that was a positive uh, thing. Well, and we it? and we and we pinpointed where the stone had come from on the other side of the road, which yeah. I don't think anybody had really articulated before. Whether anybody had actually known that but not said it, but we could actually uh, and and it is very much where the stones come from. You can see the shape mm. of the stone. It's not just oh well, there's a hole there and it might have come from that. You can actually see the shape of the stone where it was lying flat. Yeah. So yes, it was. Uh, but again, you know, we, the, the the objective here is in future is to have a small scale excavation to target some of the features that have been identified. Um, I, I involved in the community, but you know, we'll we'll talk more about that as we go go on because. Obviously, there's a COVID issue that has gotten in the way of all that. Yeah.